Hello everyone. My name is Alex Skelpsa and I'm the Director of Government and Community Affairs for the Arizona Office of Tourism. AOT is excited to welcome you to the Arizona EDA Travel and Tourism Program webinar. With all the various recovery funding opportunities available to Arizona tourism industry partners, AOT is working to ensure that we provide relevant informational webinars like this one with the Economic Development Administration on funding opportunities. Earlier this year, the EDA received $750 million in American Rescue Plan funding to assist with the recovery of communities that rely on the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation sectors. $510 million of the funding has been allocated for state tourism grants through non-competitive awards. $240 million of the remaining funds has been reserved for competitive grants to help communities that have been hit the hardest by the pandemic. In addition to specific tourism industry related grants, the EDA is also administering six other grant programs that cover a myriad of topics like workforce development, indigenous communities, and more. To provide more information on the EDA American Rescue Plan programs, I'd like to welcome Cindy Patak, your boots on the ground, Arizona Economic Development Representative. While she is part of the EDA's Seattle Regional Office, Cindy moved to Gilbert just about a year ago to help implement the agency's COVID-19 economic recovery efforts under the CARES Act. She has had an extensive career in both federal and state government that includes a background in tourism development. Cindy ran the Federal Highway Administration's National Scenic Byways Program, was later appointed to the Presidential Task Force on Travel and Economic Competitiveness under the Obama Administration, and works closely with tribal, state, and local communities in building resilient economic development strategies. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Cindy. Cindy? Thank you, Alex, and good day, everyone. Um, first and foremost, Alex, I really appreciate you coordinating today's discussion of the American Rescue Plan and Economic Development Administration's role in helping the nation build back better. I appreciate the chance to share our funding opportunities and to talk to you about how together we can rebuild Arizona's tourism economy. First, just a little bit about the Economic Development Administration for those who may not be so familiar with us. We're housed in the US Department of Commerce and we're tasked with leading the federal economic development agenda. Um, supporting innovation, global competitiveness, resilient and agile economies, EDA has an array of grant resources that can partner with you on the implementation of locally driven tourism strategies. At the beginning of this year, the Biden administration issued a new set of priorities for EDA investments. And there they are up on the screen. Um, the purpose of this webinar isn't to really go into them in, in a lot of detail, but to the right of the screen, I would encourage you to click on that link in which we go into a pretty good robust discussion on each and every one of those. But at what they are right now as of April is equity, recovery and resilience, workforce development, manufacturing, technology-based economic development, environmentally sustainable development, exports and foreign direct investment. As you see at the top of the list is a spotlight on equity. Throughout our history, EDA has sought to bring its resources to bear on the issues facing distressed communities across the country. So we are specifically asking applicants to highlight how any proposed projects will bring EDA investments to those communities and people who have been underserved in the past. Resiliency is also something that must be addressed in every proposal. And we speak to that on the Notice of Funding Opportunity, the Tourism Funding Opportunity on page 10, um, and how EDA interprets resilience. And I would encourage you to take a look at that. And that is something that appears in all six NOFOs. Today's discussion will center on EDA's programs developed to implement the American Rescue Plan Act. As Alex mentioned, we issued six of those just recently this past July. First, Let's just uh, step back a little bit and talk about who is eligible to compete for funding under the Economic Development Administration. Eligible entities for EDA's programs also encompass a range of governments, organizations, and public institutions. Our economic development districts are boots on the ground here in Arizona's like NACOG, the Northern Arizona Council of Governments, or CEGO, for example, 
are, are one of the four, some of the four economic development districts that we have in the state. We also uh, work with state and local governments, tribal nations, colleges and universities, and nonprofits that serve our communities. The big caveat here is that EDA does not provide funding for individuals or for-profit entities or other federal agencies. In July, we issued six notices of funding opportunities. And I know that this slide has a lot of information on it and it's a little bit hard to read, but I'm gonna dig into them in some detail shortly. I just wanted you to see for yourselves really how much we do have um, going on right now and what the opportunities are for you. I want to touch on them all because while our focus today is on tourism, it could be that your project could fall within some of these other opportunities as well. With the shutdowns and travel limitations imposed by the pandemic, the hospitality industry took a huge hit, and I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. So EDA has $750 million set aside for projects that aid in the recovery of travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation. Number two, the Good Jobs Challenge is our $500 million effort to help reshape the workforce development system to train workers based on employer-driven high demand skills. Moving on to number three, the economic adjustment assistance has targeted $500 million as well. Number four, the indigenous communities NOFO has $100 million set aside to support investments in community and economic development infrastructure and planning. The Build Back Better challenge is by far our biggest investment and we're looking to invest $1 billion in the development of regional industrial clusters. And finally, $90 million was targeted for statewide planning and research and networks. I want to talk about a little bit about coal communities because we do have that in the northern part of the state. As part of the plan to build back better, the administration took a closer look at helping coal communities recover from the pandemic and transition their local economies to other industries. So $300 million will target the needs of those regions. $200 million for those coal communities projects will come from the economic adjustment assistance and $100 million for the Build Back Better Regional Challenge. Uh, if we could just go back one slide. So what I'd really like you to see on this slide, it's the same slide that I showed previously with all of the six funding opportunities, but the two NOFOs that are highlighted in blue, um, there you go. The two that are highlighted in blue, you can see to the right of the screen, $200 million of that, of the coal community's commitment is, can be found under the Economic Adjustment Assistance NOFO. And then you'll see the other 100 million is under the Build Back Better Challenge. And you will simply identify your project as being relevant to the coal community's funding. And then there are certain requirements for you to substantiate that and, and your uh, proposal will be looked at in that context. Next slide, please. So just talking a little bit further about uh, coal communities, they're also eligible to apply to other notices in addition to the funding that is specific to their industrial cluster. Planning, technical assistance, infrastructure, infrastructure construction, and projects that can support the creation of new jobs and the exploration of new opportunities. And I wanna point out that there's really no predefined list of impacted coal communities. It's really up to you as an applicant, as an applicant to really make that connection for us. And in doing so, you, all you need to do is demonstrate the eligibility. Complete applications must provide third-party economic and demographic statistics that document to the extent to which contractions in the coal economy have negatively impacted your region or your community. And so the coal community is, can be fairly broad and it includes the supply chain or coal mining or any related transportation logistics to that industry. Next slide, please.
Co-communities are also eligible to apply to other funding opportunities. Um, we are encouraging coal communities to apply to all American Rescue Plan programs. And, you know, just mentioning the different types of projects you see there up on the screen. And what we're really looking to do is offer opportunities to develop national communities of practice to support coal communities in building resilient economies. And we're really looking to support those communities to the two notices of funding opportunities that I mentioned before, the Build Back Better and the EAA or Economic Assistance and Adjustment. The American Rescue Plan provides up to $1 million to all 50 states and territories for the development of recovery strategies. And Governor Ducey recently received an invitation. They were sent out in July directly to the governor's office and the funding can be used in any number of ways to, re, uh, to coordinate recovery planning, analyzing the needs of persistent poverty communities, developing broadband and deployment plans, or to conduct workforce skills gap mapping. And again, the, each state has a lot of latitude in how they wanna do that. And our planning office is working with the governor's office to develop a statement of work on how they plan to spend that funding. Now here we get to the travel tourism and outdoor recreation funding opportunity. And under the American Rescue Plan Act, I'm sure many of you know that the legislation required us to set aside 20, 25% of the available funding uh, to support the, re the recovery of the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation industries. EDA anticipates awarding $750 million in both competitive and non-competitive grants. $510 million will go directly to states and American territories to support state level recovery efforts. The state can also spend this money uh, and, and with a lot of latitude and discretion. They can spend the awards themselves or competitively sub-award the funds. And currently the Seattle Regional Office, we've distributed invitations for roughly $123 million or about 24% of the total non-competitive funding available. The allocations were based on a formula that considers the industry's impact on each state's GDP and employment. Eligible uses range from tours of marketing and promotion to workforce training, retrofits or upgrades to existing travel, tourism and outdoor recreation infrastructure or new infrastructure that will lead to long-term increases in tourism activity. Again, like the non-competitive statewide planning, there is a menu of scope of work activities and we're working uh, closely with the Arizona Office of Tourism to develop a statement of work as well. Now, the bigger discussion here for I think the group here uh, watching today is the remaining 240 million under the tourism NOFO that will be considered competitive and which will provide competitive awards for construction and non-construction uh, projects to support a community's recovery efforts. Now this part of the program has a 20% matching requirement with EDA providing 80% of a total project's cost. Eligible activities include strategy development and construction projects alike. For example, cultural projects, arts, visitor facilities, new recreational infrastructure and public access enhancements. The deadline for applications that we suggest under this NOFO is January 31st, 2022, because we are statutorily required to get all of our funding out by September of 2022. Uh, and the Seattle Regional Office has an initial allocation of $57.7 million set aside for this competitive program, which will be available until expended. Um, ultimately, again, statutorily required to make all of these awards by September of 2022. Moving on to the Indigenous Communities NOFO, this is really intended to provide economic adjustment assistance to federally recognized Indian tribes or public or profit, uh, private nonprofit organizations that serve Native communities. Nationwide, EDA has set aside $100 million for funding activities under this program. And like the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation NOFO, the, the suggested deadline is also January 31st, 2022. Eligible projects can be basic community infrastructure, such as water, sewer, and energy, or vocational and higher education facilities. 
Seattle has roughly $43.8 million set aside for this, and there are no matching funds required for Indian tribes. <clears throat> now, moving on to the economic adjustment assistance, again, noting that we've got the $200 million set aside for coal communities commitment. This is probably the NOFO that is uh, more along the lines of our traditional portfolio. And if you've worked with us in the past, you will be familiar with this. <clears throat> and frankly, um, as you look through the, all of the six NOFOs and you feel that your project doesn't necessarily fit any of the others well, this is our, our, by far our most flexible program. We're accepting applications here through March 31st, 2022 for construction and non-construction program projects alike. And the Seattle Regional Office has roughly $60 million available under this opportunity. Like the competitive tourism program, this one also has a 20% matching requirement. Funds can be used for infrastructure development or economic development planning and feasibility studies, incubator and accelerator innovation projects. You know, again, typically the types of projects we funded in the past. Generally, this program requires commitments from private sector partners to create good paying jobs and to leverage their investment in plants and equipment. And just one more note, um, I don't want you to think too hard about you know, picking the right NOFO and to think that if you make a mistake here that your proposal won't be considered. Because uh, in reality, it is important that you strategize and, and see what is the best fit from your perspective. But when we review your, your application and we feel it's a better fit under another funding opportunity, we do have the discretion to move those around or say one of these NOFOs is oversubscribed and there's still funding available in one of the other funding opportunities and your project is seemingly a good fit under one of those other opportunities, we also have the discretion to move it around in that case as well. But again, this is our most flexible funding opportunity out of all of the six. Moving on now to our two national challenges. One is focused on workforce development and the other on regional industrial cluster development. These two national challenges are really transformational and really represents an, a new way, even for the Economic Development Administration uh, in supporting economic growth. The Good Jobs Challenge seeks to support getting Americans back to work by establishing or strengthening regional training workforce systems. And systems really is the operative word here. Um, through industry sector partnerships. $5 million is set aside under this funding opportunity with an emphasis on job placements and quality jobs. Uh, and when we talk about quality jobs, the EDA's definition is really uh, a job that exceeds the local prevailing wage for an industry in the region. It's one that includes basic benefits, the things that we all want. We want paid leave, we want health insurance, we want retirements, we want savings plans and or, and I wanna point out or, or unionized jobs that help employees develop skills and experiences necessary to advance along a career path. So, you know, even though we might be initially looking at entry level positions, what we're really looking for is the opportunity for growth along a career path. Moving on to the Build Back Better challenge, this, this particular challenge, um, it's complex. And it's complex to explain in a webinar, um, but I feel that what you see up on the screen, we have some great graphics. I'd like you to focus on those because there are any number of ways the Build Back Better Regional Challenge can be approached. Uh, and I want to really point that out because we're really looking uh, for you to really define that for us. The Build Back Better Challenge is the largest investment that we're making with $1 billion projected to be spent in support of regional cluster growth. The intention is to transform economically distressed communities through substantial investment in a collection of complementary aligned construction and non-construction projects alike that are organized around a singular focus or singular vision for regional cluster development. And that could mean growing new industries, it could be scaling existing ones, and clearly a reflection of how we're moving through this pandemic um, probably speaks to how we're moving through the development of these regional clusters. The program is laid out in a two-part process, hence the complexity. Um, phase one, we're looking at concept proposals that outline a regional collection of projects that facilitate the development or expansion of an industry cluster or clusters. Competitive applications will need to provide information on regional assets 
industry leadership, sustainability, and equity. In phase one, and this is an even better graphic and for purposes of our discussion today, which is really fairly high level and feel free to reach out to me if you're, if you're interested in this so we can spend more time on this. But for now, phase one, EDA will provide technical assistance grants to approximately 50 to 60 coalitions. And this again is a na nationwide challenge. So you will be competing nationally. These coalitions will be considered finalists and what that really means is um, you can't just simply apply for phase two funding, but in order to get to phase two, you must start at phase one. And so should you become one of these 50 or 60 regions that are considered finalists, then we can start to speak about phase two. But in phase one, this grant can be used to prepare more detailed applications for transformational projects that benefit your particular geographic region. And again, how you define that. Roughly $500,000 will be awarded to cluster partners to finalize plans from the concept proposal. So when we speak to partners, we're talking coalitions, so we're not talking about individual projects here, but we're talking about a partnership approach. The deliverables for the technical assistance award include submittal of a full application for phase two of the competition and continued development of component projects, either into phase two if selected to proceed or to mature the projects for future funding opportunities at EDA or other agencies. So, you know, when we get questions like, you know, what is the point of this exercise in phase one if I'm not gonna be selected for phase two? Well, there is a point that is beyond, you know, being selected for phase two. We're really hoping that this becomes part of the culture of EDA and that we are phased, uh, funded in subsequent years, but also it provides you a portfolio of projects to either look at our other funding opportunities or quite frankly, to kind of look at other funders, whether they're other federal agencies or philanthropical in, um, institutions. But what you have is really a mature approach in how you want to look at economic development regionally. And so there is, is value and I, and I really want to emphasize that. If you are going into phase two, the intention of phase two is to fund the implementation of those plans with awards ranging from 25 million to 75 million. And from those concept proposals, EDA will select 20 to 30 coalitions from the first round to fund individual construction and non-construction component projects to support their identified regional growth cluster. You know, that number you can see it really varies. And that really is because it's really up to you to determine what types of projects would build out your economy. And, and there could be a range there. Uh, but in any case, the investments are meant to be catalytic and transformational, literal game changers for the regional industrial cluster. Coalitions and their proposed projects that are not selected for funding in phase two, again, may still be eligible for funding under other EDA programs or other federal agencies. And I want to give a shout out to our economic development integration team, because we do have an economic development integrator on staff that really uh, her network is, is just all over the federal government. And there have been many times when we've called her in because regardless of whether you're in phase one or phase two or, or whether you get funded by the EDA, sometimes the scope and magnitude of individual projects is really beyond the scope of any one particular funding agencies. The numbers are just too big. And so it is important to look at in, in, in a lot of these things in a holistic manner. And we're also here to help you do that. We anticipate about $30 million in total being awarded in phase one. In phase two, we anticipate that the cost of individual non-construction and construction component projects within the regional growth clusters will range from approximately 750,000 and up to 225 million or more if the cluster or the project warrants it. And again, that is for you to, to make that determination and how you choose to move forward in phase two. There is no match required for phase one proposals, but phase two requires 20% of the projected cost. I wanna mention that because regardless of the funding opportunity, as you kind of strategize, you know, which one fits me, it's really important that you read every single one because while typically, you know, in the federal government, we are looking at 80-20% match, 80-20 matches. And in some cases, and in most cases for us, that's true. You can see each one of these is nuanced in their own way. So it's really important to see 
what all of that is and how you might structure a project or a proposal based on those specifics. Next slide, please. So in a nutshell, very broadly, very high level, and I know very quickly, um, those are the basics for the six notices as a funding opportunity. And again, with this unprecedented investment in, in America's recovery, EDA is thinking very big. And it's my hope that now you're thinking bigger too. And, and it's my hope that communities all across the country are taking advantage of the opportunity to implement catalytic strategies to transform your local, regional, or state tourism economy. And again, think about tourism and, and how you want to rebuild your economy in your neck of the woods. Clearly, tourism, at travel and outdoor recreation is probably an excellent fit for you, but also think of it more broadly. And, and in thinking bigger, look at all of these other funding opportunities too, because you yourselves may have a portfolio of projects. And so you may fit one under the tourism NOFO, but you may have others that could fit under the others. So my one thing that I would like to mention too is, you know, when we get folks asking us, gosh, can I just take my one project and you know, apply under every one of these funding opportunities. And our response to that is, you know, spend your time really focusing on your application and making it as competitive as you can possibly be and submit it one time. And again, we have the discretion to move it around if we feel that's the, you know, there's opportunity there and we'll do that. That said, if you have more than one projects, consider that. And, and, and focus on which is the best opportunity for you to do that. And we'll take a look at them all individually as well. So that's it for me today. Um, I think my last slide, um, if we wanna put that up there, I have my contact information, more than happy to talk to folks one-on-one. -on -one. What I'd really like to emphasize here too, I've got this website, this webpage bookmarked myself because it is literally updated every day, um, eda.gov slash ARPA. Um, uh, our acronym for the American Rescue Plan Act. Look for fact sheets, FAQs, our recorded webinars. We did them a few weeks ago. We had over 20,000 20, people in attendance. We also make the PowerPoint presentations used in those webinars available to you. And we provide regular updates on all six NOFOs for your use. And I really encourage you to check them and to read, 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 read. Uh, and then, of course, make myself avail. I'll make myself available. I know I've connected people with to Alex as well, and and she's done that for me too. So thank you again, everyone, and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks, Cindy. That's such a great presentation and information. Um, and as a reminder to those watching, the EDA grants that Cindy just discussed and the Visit Arizona Initiative grants that AOT is administering are both tourism recovery focused and funded through federal American Rescue Plan dollars, but these grant programs are not connected. Um, so more information on the Arizona Office of Tourism's Visit Arizona Initiative grant program can be found at tourism.az.gov forward slash grants. And as you can see on the screen here, more information on the EDA's American Rescue Plan opportunities can um, be found via their website forward slash ARPA. And you can also reach out directly to Cindy Patak um, and her emails up there. So thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you soon.